Good morning and welcome to San Diego Living. I'm Greg Phillips. Well, crabbing for the deadliest catch on the Cornelia Marie is a hazardous work environment to say the least. But it wasn't rough waters or cold weather that took Captain Phil Harris's life. Captain Harris passed away after complications from a stroke last week. After a near-death experience and months of recovery. What do you mean you can die? Captain Phil is back in the chair, approaching his first string. We're going to haul right into the wind up to the northeast. But the question remains, can he handle the stress of a Bering Sea winter? Well, here to share what likely happened to Captain Harris and the latest trends in stroke treatment and care is Alvarado Hospital's Dr. Sean Evans. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. So, so the bigger question is, what caused Captain Harris to have a stroke? And, you know, if, if people think they may be experiencing the, the symptoms of a stroke, how can they prevent that from happening to them or their loved ones? Right. Well, I don't know specifically about Captain Harris, but the biggest single influences for stroke risk are age, which you can't do anything about, but then high blood pressure, diabetes, and smoking, which are all things that you have a huge amount of control over. So certainly to reduce your risk of stroke in the long term, never smoking and stopping smoking as fast as you possibly can are critical. And then controlling high blood pressure and controlling diabetes, which often you can't make them go away completely, but with good care, good diet, working at weight loss, you can often make them a lot less of an issue. Um, and we found that it's not a yes or no kind of issue. It's as much as you can reduce those things, the better impact it is. So it's critical, you know, especially when, when you reach age, age 40 or, you know, uh, it, you want to start going to get that yearly physical, make sure you get your blood pressure checked to make sure everything's okay. Absolutely. I'd push it down. For me, it was 30. My first son really? was born. My blood pressure was a little high. I take my blood pressure medicines every day because I don't want to have a stroke. Wow. All right. And, and you mentioned, you know, diet and exercise. I mean, that that's key. Obviously, Captain Absolutely. Harris, uh, you know, his, his job, he was, you know, obviously high stress, out on the water a lot. You know, he, he was a smoker. But you just got to make sure that, you know, y your diet is in check, especially if, you know, you go get your physical and, it's, right. and the doctor says you have high blood pressure. Well, weight certainly makes a huge impact on both blood pressure and diabetes. So if you want to take ownership yourself and try to reduce those factors for you, losing weight, eating a healthy diet, eating a balanced diet, incorporating at least 20 minutes of aerobic exercise three times a week, those are all great things. I think the partnership then with a good family practitioner, someone who's going to monitor your blood pressure, where it's appropriate, use medications to help control that, someone who's going to work and build an integrated diabetes management plan for you, including diet, nutrition, and your medications, those things all work together. And the good news is that, that people in the U.S. are surviving strokes. There's f almost 5 million stroke survivors alive today. Talk about some of the treatments that are available right now. It's an exciting time in stroke management. Um, we're kind of catching up with stroke to what our colleagues in cardiology have been doing for heart attacks for years. We have clot busting medications that can go in, break open the blood clot that's blocking the flow of blood to the brain, try to rescue brain before it actually has an irreversible injury. Um, there are all, also even exciting procedures where we can go in with devices, uh, things that look like little corkscrews or little grab claws, and pull out blood clots uh, hopefully again before they can cause permanent damage you know and we were talking before uh, we went on you were saying one of the first things that people do when they think they're experiencing signs of a stroke is call family members or their their family physician right not the thing to do right in the stroke world the slang is time is brain every second counts every minute means more of the brain that potentially is dying and so we want to get to the hospital that can deliver care as fast as humanly possible 911 accomplishes that um, I actually am a professor at UCSD we have a really fun and unique partnership with Alvarado Hospital I think it's really a model for um, stroke care in the future by a combination of our doctors working there and uh, telemedicine where we have like a Skype kind of connection between the hospitals, we can bring top level subspecialist care, any treatment that's available, and yet we can provide it in a community hospital where patients can still see their regular doctors, they don't have to be separated from the care system that they're used to. Um, the 911 system lets us access that. Instead of you just showing up at the hospital because your loved one brought you there, you're in the waiting room trying to get triaged. I get a page, I know you're inbound before you even arrive, we're waiting in the ER for you the second you get there, we can hopefully start treating you within minutes. So, you know, there's the information on your screen. If people think that, they, you know, either 
they or, the, or their loved ones may be experiencing the signs of a stroke. Maybe they have high blood pressure. Um, you know, just call uh, Alvarado Hospital, 800 Alvarado, or go to alvaradohospital.com. And you know, Alvarado has a, a great team of neurologists Absolutely. that can uh, you know take a look at you and hopefully prevent uh, you know something prevent you know, a stroke, stroke from, from happening. Starting, yeah. And if one has a warning signs of numbness, weakness on half your body, sudden changes in vision, sudden changes in your ability to speak, 911. We have treatments that can help. All right, all those signs. Thank you very much, Dr. My Sean Evans. Thank you very much. Great information. Thank you. And of course, for more information, go to our website, sandiego6.com.